So you guys you see this? This is a launch day Nintendo Switch. I mean, look at that, number seven at GameStop. Yeah. That's trash. Oh, hey, this is a version two Nintendo Switch. That red box switch, you know, came out after the light. I don't own a Switch Lite because, again, the Switch Lite's a trash. But you know what? After today's report, guess what? Red box switch, version two, that's trash as well. Let's get into it. All right, folks, so uh, we have a new report coming in, and this isn't a, a, about a rumor. This isn't, you know, anything that I'm hearing from the pipeline of Rumorville. You guys know we've covered a lot of rumors, leaks, whatever you want to call them here. This is an actual, like, report coming from Universal Display Corporation. Universal Display Corporation uh, is one of the leaders in OLED and QLED technology, and you guys remember back when Bloomberg... Uh, put out there that, hey, look, uh, Nintendo's going to be using OLED displays, a 7-inch OLED display in the new, more powerful Switch, a.k.a. the Switch Pro. And we haven't really heard much about that since, aside of the fact that the displays themselves cells were supposed to go into mass production for the uh, Nintendo Switch Pro in, like, June or early July. Uh, and obviously, everything starts to be assembled towards the end of July something around a million displays per month, indicating that Nintendo is aiming to make a million or one million, uh, you know, Switch Pros per month heading up to launch, which is pretty typical leading into the launch of a new platform, or in this case, an upgraded platform of a current generation. So the reason why this matters is because Normally, rumors and reports aren't something that get talked about by various companies because they know what's going on, right? They, they don't have a reason to talk about this stuff. But this is what gets interesting is an actual company, Universal Display Corporation, during their quarter one investors meeting, actually talked about Nintendo using OLED displays, which, of course, again, Nintendo isn't factually using OLED displays in any known device. That's at least public. So this is starting to really build up where if you are someone that is in denial that a new model switch, a more powerful model, a model using an OLED display isn't in existence and isn't coming down the pipeline, this is the biggest evidence we have had to date that you are wrong. Now, to, before I read this, I need to mention there's a couple things that Nintendo has actually put out there from their recent investors meeting. They put out there that they are reaching a record amount of uh, R&D over the last year. They have invested over $800 million in their research and development, which is an all-time high for Nintendo. They have never in the history of the company spent that much money in one year on research and development. And while they said some of this is obviously software-based and obviously game development, uh, they mentioned that, hey, not only are we working on new hardware, which that's where we talked about before, where, hey, they're talking about their next-gen hardware, maybe Switch Pro, right? They're throwing that all in there. There's a lot of R&D going behind the factual hardware aspect. They also mentioned something that we need to talk about as well, and that is Nintendo Switch Online. They mentioned Nintendo Switch Online on its own. Now, we talked about a rumor about how Nintendo's maybe working on a new virtual console, but also research and development into a new Nintendo Switch Online or an improved Nintendo Switch Online service, I think is very fascinating since Nintendo Switch Online is pretty basic at this point right you essentially pay for it either to access uh, the SNES and NES app or to play games online right there really isn't much other value there yes there's Tetris 99 uh, and that new one that came out quite recently the Pac-Man 99 uh, and we have Mario 35 and there might be a Zelda 35 or a Donkey Kong 40 coming up but for the most part uh, oh yeah don't forget game trials right they have the Nintendo Switch game trials through there but here's the thing I, I don't really find this service to be highly valuable if you don't care about playing games online. You want to play Splatoon 3 online next year, Animal Crossing online, etc. Yeah, you have to buy this service, but besides that, it's more of a you have to have it more so than it being a value, right? The other platforms, while they make you have to have it to play online, they try to make it also valuable to the consumer where they feel less bad about paying the access online by providing you enough other things with that service to make it seem worthwhile. Nintendo hasn't really done that, at least not, in my opinion, to the point of satisfaction of consumers. So Nintendo investing heavily in that is important. But now let's get into this actual report. Um, this is crazy. These are exact words coming from Ambrinson, who is the president and chief 
uh, executive officer and director of Universal Display Corporation. And he said, um, with the result, the price delta between OLED and LCD TVs has further narrowed from $310 down from $440. Talking about the differences in the price points of OLED and LCD and the price differences uh, for TVs. The OLED market is burgeoning with the launch of new products. Just last month, saw OLED laptops, including the Xiaomi Mi Laptop Pro 15 and the Dell XPS 13 9310 were unveiled. Yes, more and more laptops are starting to use OLED. It says, and in the gaming market, there are reports that, for the first time, Nintendo has selected an OLED screen for the new Switch Pro, using the terminology Switch Pro even, uh, due to OLED benefits such as uh, better contrast or faster response times. The adoption of OLEDs continues to expand and is fueling the multi-year OLED CAPEX growth cycle, which we are in. So essentially, they're bringing up in an investor's meeting the fact that Nintendo is likely going to be using OLED panels. At this point, the Switch Pro is one of the worst kept secrets in gaming. And the thing is, this is something we see with Nintendo before because the whole hybrid system in the first place, the entire existence of the Switch that was announced back in 2016 was also one of the worst kept secrets. There was highly rumored that Nintendo was doing a hybrid for almost two years and people just didn't want to believe it right until you see it you don't want to believe it and then the switch Lite was rumored for almost an entire year again people didn't believe it why would nintendo release a switch that doesn't switch well they did just like they released a 3ds that doesn't 3d then they not only did they release a 3ds that doesn't 3d they released a 3ds that doesn't fold it's still got two screens but it didn't fold like this would have felt like an impossible concept. Wait, Nintendo's going to get rid of the 3D and they're also going to make it not be a clamshell anymore? That sounds like a stupid, impossible thing. And yet Nintendo did that. And that's what's happening here. This is something that while it's been rumored for a few years, and I get that that gets a little old, the smoke keeps building and building and building. This is the first time an outside company has mentioned that, that hey, look, we know this is happening. There's reports out there about it. Nintendo's going to be using OLED panels. This supports our idea of focusing more on OLED moving forward. And yeah, this is happening across the entire space and technology from computers to TVs to video game consoles, right? They are using Nintendo doing this to help bolster their revenue prospects moving forward because obviously they could be a potential partner that could help with OLED technologies with Nintendo in the future. We presume right now the partner for it is Samsung based on the current reports because Samsung does make OLED panels as well. So this is really, really interesting to me. Um, I, I, I find any actual factual reports out there that talk about this to be something we need to pay attention to because where there is smoke and there is a lot of smoke there's definitely fire and all of us are looking for every piece of ounce that's not a rumor not a leak something that's actually factually being talked about by companies to point to the fact that the Switch Pro is real and this is just one of the biggest pieces of evidence as we have besides Nintendo obviously mentioning themselves they're making new hardware that Switch Pro is having. Because new hardware might not be Switch Pro. That could be next gen. But this, this is the proof that I think a lot of us have needed that this is happening. At this point, we are just waiting for Nintendo's announcement timing. And for those that wonder, why haven't we heard it yet? Well, there's pretty good reason for that as well. And that reasoning that we haven't heard about it is, ha, huh, it's not coming out yet. Let's be clear here. All of the reports on manufacturing have Nintendo going into the mass production with this system this summer, right? That's typically what happens when you're leading up to launch. But here's the deal. Nintendo isn't treating Switch Pro like it's a new generation system because it's not. It is the new Nintendo 3DS. It is, uh, you know, the, the DSi. It is not a system that needs to headline something like E3. And this is why I want you to temper expectations. I'm not saying it's impossible for Nintendo to talk about, to even unveil a Switch Pro. And by the way, we all know it won't be called that. <laughs> but to unveil that, that more powerful Switch, the Switch Plus, the Super Switch, the Switch Pro at, you know, E3. They absolutely could do that. There's no doubt. But 
it's a bit unrealistic if you expect Nintendo to do what they did with the Switch Lite, which was release it really close to the holiday period. If Nintendo is planning to release this system around the holidays of this year, talking about it this summer, talking about it in June at E3, doesn't actually make sense. Keep in mind, the OG Switch, the base model, or might, might be known as the family model Switch moving forward, is sold out almost all of the time. And if Nintendo announces there's a new model, a Switch coming at June, it's going to make consumers get a little tepid about buying Switches now. Because they want to make sure, hey, you know, Nintendo says maybe there won't be exclusives, but how do we know third parties won't be exclusive? Oh, Nintendo says this. Nintendo says that. Nintendo's doing this. X, Y, Z. What's going to happen? Oh, all my games are going to run better. We need to wait and see. People might stop buying Switches waiting for the Pro to come. Companies don't like to do that. There's always short lead-up time, right? There was a short lead-up time from when PS4 Pro was announced to PS4 Pro coming out. A short lead-up time for Xbox Series X to Xbox... Uh, I'm sorry, Xbox One X to the Xbox One X coming out. And that's what's probably going to happen here. Nintendo announced Switch Lite two months before Switch Lite came out. That is the kind of lead-up time you should expect. So unless you think Nintendo is releasing the Switch Pro in August, which... Sure, I don't feel like they would have enough units yet, but sure, uh, then yeah, I, it's pretty unrealistic to expect them to talk about it at E3. They might, and they could have a slip up, and one of the developers might accidentally say something, even though it's all pre recorded. I presume it's all pre recorded. Maybe there are some live aspects where something might slip up, but. I honestly think that you're not going to see this system until probably. August, maybe September, uh, if it's going to arrive this year at all. Remember, reports out there are saying it might not come till 2022. So that's why we haven't heard about it yet. Nintendo isn't stupid. They, they don't want to slow down sales of Switch. They want to maintain momentum, increase momentum with the release of the Switch Pro. So why release it now when momentum is so great? Wait, wait. Don't kill momentum so people wait. Wait until this thing's almost here. Wait until people are looking at making holiday purchasing decisions. Then drop the news, have people bundle it with their holidays, get it with their Breath of the Wild 2s or whatever else is coming, uh, and call it a day. So that's why we haven't heard about it. And this is really interesting, again, from Universal Display Corporation. Uh, so credit to them. Obviously, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like to help us out with that YouTube algorithm and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. We'll be staying all on top of the Switch Pro news. We'll be staying on top of all the rumors and leaks out there. We'll also be staying on top of all the legit news that comes out that's actually interesting to me. Uh, there is not a lot going on, although some interesting news came out about Bot and Kato's we might talk about a bit later. I don't know if you guys are interested in Bot and Kato's too much or that, that IP. I think there's two games in it from Bandai Napco, but um, I am very interested in that franchise. So bare minimum, we'll probably talk about that at least in a live stream later tonight. Remember, we do do live streams Monday through Friday. Wednesday's live stream is a podcast, um, so tune in for that. Otherwise, folks, be sure to check out our E3 coverage coming up because we are ramping up to E3. I do have some planned videos in the work for that, including predictions. Uh, you know, Basically, we're going to have a E3 leak summary video, and then we're going to have an E3 predictions video as well for different companies. Uh, we're definitely going to do one for Microsoft and for Nintendo, and then we'll see if uh, we're, I decide to do things besides platform holders because some of the predictions for those might overlap with some of the other companies, like Sega games could be involved in it, Bandai Namco games could be involved in those predictions. So we'll see if I go beyond the platform holders but you can at least plan on those three videos coming out um otherwise folks our other e3 coverage we have going on starts on june 12th as far as we're aware unless there's some events happening before june 12th but right now we are planning on a four day live stream 12 hour days um what is it the uh 11th wait the, yeah the 11th 12th 13th 14th oh wait no 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. So yeah, either it's from June 12th to June 15th. We're going to have four live streams. We have one of the links down in the description below for the first stream we're doing for E3. Uh, and we're going to be giving away a lot, right? $3,500 plus worth of stuff, over 300 plus winners uh, going away with something. I can't wait. You guys are awesome. You guys deserve it. You guys are an amazing community that I've been working hard with all these companies and my own personal funds to give back to during E3. We'll have gaming competitions. We'll have contests. We'll have Eric and I making fun of each other. We're going to have a really, really good E3, and I hope you guys all decide to join us for it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and as always, I'll catch you in the next video.